Hey, this is Veronica with Oh Happy Plants and today we're gonna do a quick little fiddle leaf fig tutorial. So, I've got a little tiny fiddle leaf fig. This is Ficus Lyrata Bambino, or Little Bambino, I guess, and they are the cutest little guys. I freaking love them. This guy is potted up in my specialty dirt. This is actually my tropical climber mix and um, it's been perfect for these. I am going to make a ficus specific blend though. So just to get into this, we're gonna start at the bottom. We've got dirt. So this mix is very chunky and it holds quite a bit of water and it also has a lot of charcoal and some vermiculite in there. And both of those things um, will increase the amount of air that is available to the roots. And it also kind of breaks up the roots because these start as epiphytes often like the the seed from the parent tree will land on an old dead tree or even just land in a live tree like one of the seeds might land up here and then what it does is it starts growing and it sprouts a little tiny tree and you think oh how cute that baby tree is living off that big one and then the fiddle drops roots down to the ground and grows bigger and eventually just eats the the tree it landed on and it, so they're kind of like cannibals but they're cute forgive them right It'd be like if Groot was a vegetarian. I think that's okay. Anyway, um, so this little guy, he is so adorable. I just love him. This is a Bambino. The normal fiddles, their leaves will get like big, like two feet long, three feet long if you um, have them out in nature. These little guys stay pretty small. The biggest one of these leaves will get is probably about like that big. Like that's half the size of my face. That's the biggest these guys will get. So they're really fun. Um, they will get tree sized. So like, don't be fooled. Just because the leaves are small don't mean the tree is any smaller. Um, but this guy is obviously quite small and quite cute. And um, he is growing. He's probably twice as big as when I got him. Anyway, so basic care for these guys. Like I said, you want a chunky mix because they are semi-epiphytic and they do drop their leaves down to, or their roots down to the ground. <laughs> Let me just get the anatomy right. Um, so you do want to give them something with plenty of little chunks in there. Like this is just a cocoa coir chunk and I'm dropping dirt all over the floor. Um, so when I water this guy, it's really important. I have him set up like this. There's a saucer in the bottom of this pot. Let me put him down. Stop knocking the camera. Make a bunch of noise. I've got a saucer in this pot because this is a copper pot, so it'll um, it'll start to discolor and kind of like rust out the bottom if I um, if I just were to put the plant itself in there. So I have a deep saucer. I have no holes in the bottom of this pot, and I just kind of take the nursery pot out and set him in there. And this is my favorite way to set up a plant because then if you need to water it. A six inch pot that's really, really light, like this one is right now, needs water. If I had this in some kind of really heavy ceramic pot, I wouldn't be able to tell just by picking it up if it needs water or not. So this is what I do all the time. Like, I don't think I have any of my plants direct planted anymore, like zero, because this is the easiest way to tell if a plant needs water, you just pick it up. And then you're like, oh yeah, that's dry. I missed a couple days, whoops. So, um, so with these guys, this guy is actually all the way dry. If I, if I were to pull the root ball out or stick my finger up in one of these grow holes, I would not feel any moisture at all. It's totally like powdery and dry. And that's okay for a little while. You never want to let them go dry for more than a day or so at a time. Um, especially if it's hot outside, like this guy would be starting to suffer if it was hot outside. But because it's cooler and because the sun is starting to, um, what's the word for the opposite of intensify? detensify. I made that up. Um, the sun is going away. It's the fall. So it's cooler. He's not using as much water because he's not growing as much right now. So it's okay that he went dry for a few days. But in the summer, you never want to let these go fully, fully dry because they're using so much water. Letting it go fully dry, the chance you're going to catch it before it starts suffering and the root hairs start dying because it's so like it's trying to grow so much, the chance you'll catch it is pretty slim. So it's good to just like if the top is dry and the bottom still has a tiny bit of moisture and the pot isn't totally light, like totally bone dry, then it's time to water. So with watering with these babies, I will either pull this up and just hold it above the pot 
and let the water run into the saucer until it just runs through and until the soil is fully saturated, then pop him out and dump the saucer. Or what's easier for me, I just carry this whole thing to the sink. I water him at the sink until it's running through and then I turn off the water, let it drip a little bit and then just pop it back in the saucer. That is how I water. You never want him sitting in a puddle. That's really important. Um, when you see a plant that is sitting in a puddle, you're gonna notice speckly nonsense on the backs of the leaves. And I think, I feel like this guy had some. Yeah, let me see if you can see on this leaf. It's a little bit brown like right here. There's this little brownish stuff right there. And that is called edema. And so those ones happened while he was at the nursery. Um, he got a little bit too wet and um, and he, what, what happens is they pull the water up into the tissue. And when this leaf was a new little baby, the tissue is really soft. Like these ones, I guess we don't have any super baby leaves, but when, when you see a new baby leaf, it's gonna be a lighter green and it's also gonna be a lot more flexible. And when a plant leaf is more flexible like that, it's because it hasn't really um, solidified the cell wall structure. And it does that with um, like additional sugars, which is like the, the cellulose and the, you know, which like the sugars that it makes from the sun. Um, the cellulose, silica is one ingredient, and then the waxy coating on the outside will help to solidify the plant. Um, before that, it'll pull up water into the plant and it goes all the way to the top. And if the new leaves are still really soft, it can actually burst the cell walls because they get too much water inside of them. So that's a danger of keeping it in either the wrong soil mix. Like if your soil mix doesn't drain properly and gets too saturated, that's a problem. Or if you let it sit in a puddle of water, then it can be trying to draw that up so the roots don't have so much water around them but what it does is it overfills the cell walls and it pops them and then you have this discoloration. And I've seen it get really bad on some plants and that's one of the main things that people struggle with. So the other thing, the other thing, which is kind of the opposite, people hear don't overwater and they hear that fiddles don't like water and they freak out and they underwater. And I see this all the time when you see like brown, like if this whole edge of this leaf was brown or if there was a brown patch in here on the leaf or anywhere, like big crispy brown bits, that is a sign of underwatering right there. And um, a lot of people will tell you that it might be overwatering, especially if there's a little yellow halo, but I've seen that when a plant is totally dried out. More often than not, like I'd say even 95% of the time, it's gonna be underwatering because people are so scared of overwatering because that's all anybody talks about. So with that, or if your plant is losing leaves from the bottom up, you are underwatering and you need to up your water. And one other thing, um, that is if it's in a good light location. Fiddle leaves, like any other ficus, they do need natural light. I have not met a ficus that doesn't need full spectrum light. They are one of the fussy ones. So that's actually, this guy is the one who tests my grow lights when I get a new type of grow light from a new manufacturer. I, I give the fiddle leaf fig the, you know, the tester spot. I'm like, here, if you like it under this grow light, then anybody likes it because these ones are fussy when it comes to light. So what you wanna do is make sure that he has a really good bright window. He can handle some direct light, but not afternoon sun. You don't want the super intense rays right on him and you don't want the super hot sun right on him either. So um, this guy is in my south window and he is about three feet away from my west window over there. And um, he's literally like, six inches away from the south facing pane. And I live near Seattle in Washington state. And so south facing windows in the summer here do get quite a bit of bright light, but the majority of our really cooking hot sun is gonna be from the west. So I definitely don't put him right in a west window because he would probably bleach, but a few feet away from it is fine. And um, that is the majority of those tips. One thing, if your plant is in low light, or if you have him like against a, a wall that's painted green, or if for some reason like you're in an office building that has green tinted windows, all of the light that comes through or all of the light that reflects off the green wall is green in color. 
and all of the light that reflects off of green chlorophyll is also green. So plants can't actually use green light. If you have, if you shine like a green, like if you have like a filter over a light and you shine it on them and it's a green filter, none of that light is useful to the plant, 0%. So that's another kind of important thing to think about is if you put a plant in a green light, it's essentially in the dark. Um, I've seen, I've seen some office buildings that have really weird tint on their windows and I don't know what they're thinking, the people inside, like, do we all want to walk around and have green faces? Like, I don't understand. Um, anyway, I digress. So um, if you have your plant in the dark, what's going to happen is you're going to notice leaf drop. You're going to notice the edema, like I said, because anytime you do water it, it's going to not really be able to use the water actively because it doesn't have enough light to be photosynthesizing well. Um, you're also going to be noticing those brown patches if you're really like trying to play with the water so it do you don't give it too much and then it's going to not have enough because too much is like any water when it's in the dark is too much. And um, so it's just, it's really tricky to get a fig to last well in a really dim situation. And I've, I've seen some people who are saying that they can do that and um, by all means, let me know how, you know, show me pictures. Um, if you have kept a fiddly fig alive and healthy for like over a year or two years in the same darkish location and it really doesn't get good light, then I definitely want to know. But um, otherwise, these do need relatively bright light and usually that's the problem for people if you have a fiddle that's suffering and especially if it's, um, you know, if your water is, is spot on and if your soil mix is chunky and airy, then it's probably a light issue. So um, I hope that helps and I hope you guys can keep your fiddles in gorgeous condition. Um, this guy I've only had for, I don't know, like six months or something. And um, he's, he's doubled in size. Maybe I've only had him for four months, I don't know. But he's definitely doubled in size and um, he's just super happy. Now, one thing, I did actually find some mites on him one time. Just a couple down on a leaf here. And mites can cause another type of damage. You'll see them like nestling kind of along the leaf veins. And they, it looks a little bit like, almost like the plant got a little sunburnt, but only along the leaf veins. And um, if you look closely or if you just wipe it with a cloth, you may be cleaning off mites. And so just be a little bit careful when you buy a new fig. I know that um, a lot of the big box stores right now are getting really big, gorgeous figs in. And a lot of people have reported that they're coming home with mites. So um, be a little bit careful with that. Make sure you give your plant plenty of baths and, um, and keep them quarantined when you bring them home. I hope that helps, guys. Have a good day.